Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another standard video. I'm playing good game. Let's go E4 in this one. I'll continue with my King's Pawn openings. Okay. And we have a Pierce. Pierce. Also known as the Perk in some circles. <laughs> the least correct pronunciation, but... Okay, Knight F6. Uh, lots of different systems you can play against this opening. Knight c3 by far the most common. I've dabbled in bishop d3, but let's go ahead and play knight c3. This is a 15 plus 15 game. I got a game right away, so I'm happy to see that. My classical rating's over 2400 on Lee Chess, so I feel pretty good about that. But ultimately, I want to play good games. And the rating is just a reflection of that. So, okay. And now uh, this move g6. So what system do I want to go for here? I'm kind of thinking of trying to launch a kingside attack somehow, and there's various lines you can you can use to do that, featuring bishop e3, queen d2, f3, bishop h6. That's pretty well known. You know, I wonder if I can play this king's Indian style with bishop e2 and a possible g4, h4. That also crosses my mind here. A lot of times I simply play knight f3 in this situation and then bishop e2, but I think that's a little bit lame. I played a lot of f4. That's the Austrian attack. Let's play bishop e2 just to try to keep it in somewhat original territory. Uh, I don't ever recall playing this move in this position, but I've seen it played. So I'm kind of curious how this is going to develop. So black may already be sensing my, my ideas here with a potential h4, h5. I'm probably not going to play that so soon, but after I go bishop e3, it may be on the cards, and I may delay the development of this knight in the process. So, yeah, let's play bishop e3 now. So basically withholding this knight in the hopes of using my light score bishop to spur on a kingside pawn push. And if I were black, I'd be hesitant to commit my king to the kingside. I'd try to keep my king flexible for now. Yeah, so a6, that makes a lot of sense here. I'm going to play a4, just stop black from going b5. I don't want to think about it too much. I think safe to say we're probably both out of our book knowledge at this point. So given how flexible the position remains, I'd really like to avoid tanking and giving the momentum to my opponent on the clock. So the only thing about a4 is it does make it somewhat less likely that I'm going to castle queenside because I have pushed that pawn and therefore even if black were to play b5 as a pawn sacrifice later after I've castled queenside, that has some implications for me. But allowing the pawn to b5 when this pawn is a little loose, I don't like that either. I mean, I could try to meet b5 with a3, but Black's, black has that bishop coming to b7. Okay, and black does castle. So what's the best way to go about this if I want to play for the initiative? Should I play g4 or h4 here? Kind of leaning towards g4, folks, because if I play h4, I'd have to reckon with h5, which I have seen games where white plays knight h3, knight g5, or f3, g4. So not saying I'm completely ruling that out, but drawing a parallel to the king's Indian, when white plays this bishop e2 line, I think they go g4, h4, then h5, usually. Hmm. I wonder, though. So, okay, if I assume black's going to counterattack in the center somehow, and note g4, if I were to play it, by the way, is a safe move because I have my bishop and my queen defending. If black were to take on g4, they'd lose a piece for a pawn. So trying to anticipate how black's going to counterattack, we got to look at the pawn moves like e5 and also knight c6 followed by e5. I even kind of like g4 for the, the g5 factor, the fact that I can perhaps play the g5 move and kick the knight to an awkward square. Yeah, uh, they're both tempting. They're both tempting. Again, I don't know if this is a, a move that I should really sweat over because they both look pretty interesting. So let's let's go ahead and play g4. The move I'm kind of leaning towards, was leaning towards.
And I wonder what Black's going to do here if Black's going to make an attempt to attack the center. That is the usual advice, right? When your opponent is showing aggression on a wing, when they're attacking on a flank, the classical advice is try to counter in the center. It doesn't always work. It's not always appropriate, but it works enough that it's become an axiom. So surely Black wants to look at something like e5. I, I could definitely see e5, d5, c6 being played. Trying to gouge at the center. But again, I, I like the fact that I have this g5 move. I don't know that I would even play it, but it's nice that it's on the table as an option to kick the knight. For example, if black ever plays knight bd7, maybe g5 becomes more appealing because the d7 square has been taken away from black. They have the so-called superfluous knights that can step on one, one another's toes. Black can still go back to e8, but that's kind of passive. If left to my own devices, probably h4 will be my next move, and then h5. Rush on the king side. Maybe queen d2, bishop h6 eventually, but working up to h4, h5 for sure. And having played g4 to preface this, I'm trying to rule out h5 as a defense for black, because I'll just take the pawn. I'm playing this game fairly late at night, by the way. It's almost 10 p.m. I'm drinking decaf. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I have a very busy day tomorrow, and I'm going to upload this tomorrow night. So just trying to get a little head start on the recording. All right, so C6. Yeah, C6 hints at B5. But is B5 really a threat? Because I can take, and there's this pin issue. So I don't know that that requires me to deviate much from my intended path here with h4. Maybe black's going to go e5. Could that be the idea? And they want to have this pawn already on c6 if they play e5. Could be possible. I could still play the g5 move. But let's go ahead and play h4. Black does seem a little hesitant, spending some time on these last couple of moves. But I'm playing real modern style here, right? We're eight moves into the game, and how many pawn moves have I played? Five pawn moves? How many is that? Yeah, five. One, two, three. One, two. Yeah, okay. Not, not a whole ton. I've seen more. <laughs> but enough, especially to the fourth rank, that the position already starts to look enterprising. And it's the type of thing if black doesn't seriously consider counterattacking with their pawns and trying to create at least a threat, they can quickly find themselves in a tough position, I think, after this h5 idea, looking for the capture on g6, possibly h6 in some cases, but mainly the capture on g6, trying to open the h line. So if I had to anticipate a move here, I think e5, maybe d5 will be played. Possibly black would play a developing move like knight bd7, but I don't get the sense there that ecstatic about that move when I'm, I'm ready to play g5. So I would predict a pawn move at this stage. Let's assume e5 is played. I could swap pawns on e5 and then trade queens. Bishop b6 or something. That doesn't really seem in the spirit of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So I think e5, more than likely I'll go d5 or possibly g5. e5, d5, trying to keep the center closed. If c takes d5, maybe then I play g5. I'd have to reckon with d4 at that point. There's some confusion. That line may not even be good for me. So, okay, an e5 played. So this plays right into what I was just calculating. If d5... C takes D5, I think I would play E takes D5 based on how I've handled this. And only then turn my attention to the whole H5 plan. However, with this diagonal towards the black king close, this A2, A2 G8 diagonal, that's a little safer for black. If ever they have to play F takes G6, then they won't have to worry about a check here at least. So I do think E5 is correct. So just thinking again how I want to play this, 
It's between taking on e5, pushing d5, and this g5 move. g5 is tempting. g5 is definitely tempting because if e takes d4, I don't have to get involved in e takes f6. Although it may actually just work out because queen takes f6, I'm seeing I can play bishop g5. But I was also going to say g5, e takes d4, just bishop takes d4 looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm leaning towards playing this move when knight h5 would uh, perhaps be unpleasant for black. Not out of the question black might play that move and try to sack a pawn in the hopes of gaining the bishop pair. But yeah, you know what? I'm going to play g5. Make black sweat the decision about where to put the knight. Whether to go to h5, d7, or e8. There's not a single knight move here. Uh, I probably should have considered knight g4. Okay, yeah, I didn't consider knight g4. I'm seeing now that that is an option. Not the end of the world if black plays that, but that does take advantage potentially of my bishop on e3 and the, the pressure on d4 along this diagonal with that bishop lurking on g7. So, hmm. Yeah, probably something I should have looked at. Maybe another move was f3 in this position, although that might be one too many pawn moves. But Okay, still, knight g4 is not an obvious move. It's possible black won't see it. And even if they do, let's start calculating. Bishop takes g4. Bishop takes g4. I could simply take, let's say queen takes g4, and then e takes d4. does fork the two pieces. Maybe something like bishop d2, take on c3. Okay, I'm going to immediately stop calculating that line because it's irrelevant now. Knight h5 played. All right. So black is willing to give up this pawn because they see that they have that counterattack on d4. But it makes me think maybe I can insert the trade on e5 first. If I play e d takes e5, how is black likely to react? Because this knight's not going anywhere especially when f4 is just guarded by my bishop. There's no longer a pawn there for black on e5. So I think if I take on e5, let's assume bishop takes back. Bishop takes h5. G takes h5. Queen takes h5. My queen side's a little exposed, but I do see that my knight can come to e2. So let's say queen a5, knight g to e2. It's an extra pawn. Might be a little tough to attack without the light square bishop, but I don't see much compensation that black has for that pawn. So I'm going to assume that position's promising for me. So yeah, looking at this, I don't think I want to delay the tension situation too much, like playing a developing move here and allowing knight f4 or maybe a capture on d4, but especially knight f4 doesn't look great. So yeah, let's go ahead and take here. If pawn takes, I'll take on h5 again. Note that queen takes d1 at that point would be a big blunder because I can come back with the bishop. I'd be up a full piece. Yeah, so black does take back with their pawn. Now, I feel this bishop is probably going to be buried for black. So let's take here. Yep. And barring something, something seriously unexpected here that I haven't looked at yet, Queen takes h5 has to be the move. My queen's not going to get trapped. Bishop g4 is not a threat. Yeah, I think this, this line is a big improvement for me compared to if black had taken with the bishop on e5 because this bishop has no scope in this position. Yeah, so let's take the pawn. And I'm envisioning this knight on g1 coming to e2, then to g3, and then to f5 eventually. Or possibly my queen moving out of the way once the knight's on g3 and getting knight h5 in. Yet another plan is just move the queen back, like let's say queen e2 and push h5, h6. Yeah, I think this position is looking real dangerous for black all of a sudden. I do feel fortunate that black didn't notice knight g4 here. I don't think either of us anticipated knight g4 from a couple moves back, but that should have been on my radar before I made the decision to play g5. Okay, an enterprising move here by black, f5, lashing out. Well, you know, the Anarchy Chess subreddit is going to be severely disappointed if I don't play g takes f6 
en passant. So I think fortunately for them, that's clearly the best move here. I doubt I want to take on f5 because that allows the bishop to come out smoothly and they can blockade this square. All right, I do have g6 as an option I should consider. But g6, h takes g6, queen takes g6, there's f4 slamming the door. So I think probably the, the capture makes the most sense here. I could try to go queenside at that point. I could castle queenside. Yeah, that position starts to look real good. Maybe black's going to play queen g6 if they capture with the queen. So queen taking on f6 and then very quickly queen g6. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to take Ampassan anyways, so <laughs> my opponent not showing a lot of confidence with that message. <laughs> I think they're being honest, but uh, there's still definitely a game left here. True to their username. Good game. Okay, good. It's continuing. Queen takes f6. Uh, yeah, again, I don't think this is at all settled yet. Uh, yes, I'm up a pawn. Yes, black's king looks exposed, but I still need to coordinate an attack. And I think if knight e2, this queen g6 move is kind of annoying. Because I'd be forced to trade queens there, and I don't really want to trade queens. Stop the presses, I know. John doesn't want a queen trade. Might just be the best decision. There's also queen f3, by the way. So that is maybe more of a reason to just castle queenside here and see how black reacts. Yeah, I think I'm going to castle queenside. Let's do that first. Coordinate. I do feel safer castling over here now. I know was, I remember very early on I mentioned I'm less likely to castle queenside because I played a4. And while it is true that my king would be safer if the pawn were back on a2 because black wouldn't have a hook, b5 has less of an effect now because the action is taking place on the king side. This part of the board is already opened up. Black's pieces on the queen side haven't joined the action yet. This isn't creating two points of contact, so I don't have to react to that move. I'm not going to take the pawn and allow black to open the A file, for instance. I'm just going to leave it. So I do feel pretty safe with my king over there. Okay, bishop e6, sensible move. Absolutely sensible. Might be time to play the knight e2 move here. Yeah, I think I've delayed that enough. And I, want to, I just want to go rook g1 after that. One of the rooks over. Probably the h rook. There is still queen g6. But I feel more coordinated now that I'm castled. I think I can quickly get my... Uh, one of my rooks to bear down on g6. Maybe the other one stays on the d file. Maybe there's f4 here too, by the way. I should look at this move. If take, bishop d4. Seems unnecessarily complicated, though, and probably not even good. Queen g6. Bishop g5 never seems to do much. Rook h2, rook g2. I'm not super taken by this move. There's knight h3. Knight h3 is another option here if I really want to come to this square. Perhaps I should be looking at that more seriously. Yeah, actually, that's a good point I've made to myself. Good point, John. <laughs> You got to talk to yourself in chess, right? Really get into your own thought process. Knight h3, I mean, coming to g5 is actually kind of interesting and, and useful. Knight h3, bishop f7, queen g4, let's say. Yeah, that's, that's handy. That's handy. What about knight h3, queen f3? Okay, well, then I can trade queens and play knight g5. There's also back rank issues. Yeah, maybe this is just a better better option. Because what advantages do I really have coming to this square? I mean, maybe I can play f4, but the knight would support f4 there. Backs up the other knight, but I don't feel like I really need that. Yeah, let's go knight h3. Probably both options are good, but let's play this one. Thanks again to everyone who watches these longer games and videos. I do greatly appreciate it. I know it's a big time ask watching something that's 45 minutes or an hour oftentimes. And I have noticed these videos get a uh, fewer views. So 
I totally understand committing to a video that long is, is difficult. I know for me too, it's hard to find the time. Often it's something I have to watch in the background, which for a game like this, <laughs> this format at the 2000 plus level is maybe going to be hard to watch in the background because you're probably going to be feeling pretty engaged or want to be engaged to learn the most out of this. But it's all good because I like making these videos. Uh, I may adjust the cadence of them at times, especially if I consistently see people uh, not clicking on them as often as like the climbing the rating ladder stuff. Because they are they are time consuming to make. And I'd like to find some some nice balance where uh, it's not not something that I'm not looking forward to. But for now, no change. I'll continue making these regularly because these are actually my favorite type of videos to make. The standard videos. Okay, Bishop F seven and Queen E two. Yeah, I'm, I know I'm not gonna sweat. Queen takes H four. That looks like. Immediate game over after knight g5, hitting the queen with tempo with the rook here. Oh, uh, queen g4 is another option. I did mention that. I'm not sure which one is better. It's kind of hard to say. Do I want my queen assisting in the attack down the g-file, or is it better to just tuck it on e2? Might be a fairly inconsequential decision. I think I'll go queen g4. Yeah, let's play queen g4. I'm envisioning if black plays b5 ever, my queen's on e2, they might have bishop c4 with tempo, so let's do this. I think it's fairly likely black will want to hide their king. And I can always double up on the g-file. I can always play knight g5. Note it's hard for black to get the knight in the game because now they're not controlling d7. So that should play to my advantage. Black could bring this bishop back to e6. That's definitely possible. Maybe then I would play queen e2. Although it's a little hard to explain like why I would go queen g4 and then queen e2. I could also play queen g3, I see. So that's, that's another option. Bishop e6, queen g3. Yeah, tough for black to coordinate here. Especially with this knight being unable to join. They're down a pawn. Their king is kind of exposed. They have the bishop pair. That's about the only thing going for black. I think I would play king h8 if I were black. I feel like you have to play that move pretty soon. Maybe rook g8 on the way. Also, king h8, if I play knight g5, it does give the bishop the g8 square. And maybe they can hold out with that formation, but it's not looking promising. Okay, a5, I think black's almost certainly trying to run their knight through a6 with that move. I see no other reason why black would play that. So I think they're admitting that they can't go through d7 ever, so try to get it out that way. Okay, so many moves to consider here for me little time check. I've got time, but we don't want to get too low. So rook g1, bringing a rook to g1 looks pretty obvious. Knight g5 is an obvious move too. Maybe bishop c5 followed by rook d6. Yet another option. Attack the rook on f8, try to get, get the rook in. Maybe knight g5 in conjunction with that plan could be really interesting. I do like the look of many of these moves. I think I'm going to start with rook g1. This seems like a pretty easy move to make. And I do like that rook d6 could be a threat. Looking to deflect this queen, which is the sole defender of g7. Yeah, because now after this move, rook d6 might just end this. Black plays the, the knee-jerk reaction king h8. But I think rook d6 is a knockout here. Just thinking, because if this move works, it's going to be game over. So it's a deflection idea, trying to drag the queen away so I can take on g7. Kind of nice to get this rook involved in an offensive capacity as well. Black could play something like h5, but rook d6, h5, I probably just back the queen off to g3. 
and everything remains the same. If bishop e6 at that point, note I can play rook takes e6, yet another deflection. So I think that will do the trick. One last scan here for any loose ends before we fire away with rook d6. Always good to just take a little bit of time. Look for any unexpected checks, captures, counterattacks. Put yourself in your opponent's shoes. Try to imagine any way you would, you would fight for survival in this situation because we know that they're going to be desperate. Yeah, I don't see it. So let's, let's play rook d6. Aesthetically pleasing move to play as well. I will reward myself with a sip of coffee. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not rewarding myself prematurely, but I don't really see what black can do here. I mean, bishop h5, can't remember if I mentioned that move. I saw against that I can take on f6. Bishop takes g4 and then take on f8 with check, followed by scooping on g4. I'd be up a minor piece in the end, plus, plus the pawn that I was up already. So that's probably the most clinical way to do things after bishop h5. Tempting to move the queen back, but then there is queen f7 or queen e7, and the fight may continue. So I think I'll probably just go for rook takes f6. Yep, bishop h5 played. I've identified a good option. We could try to get fancy something like this, but wh why even bother? I've identified a line that gives me a, an extra piece and a pawn in a simplified position. It's going to be good enough to win. I could beat Magnus from that position, I'm pretty sure. So let's do it. Write in the comments if you think you could also beat Magnus from this resulting position. When I mentioned that, someone is in, in their head going to be thinking Magnus could beat me from either side here, which is probably true for <laughs> many people watching. <laughs> if I was just up a pawn and not a piece, I'd be feeling, you know, far less secure against Magnus. But with an extra minor piece, should be able to get the job done. Uh, okay, knight g5, I'm thinking, threatens knight f7 mate. Hard to argue with that one. Also, the knight could run in through e6. This knight is on the edge of the board, so it makes sense to try to include it. Yeah, let's do it. Maybe we'll get a picturesque conclusion here if black allows mate. Black resigns. All right, thanks for the game. Appreciate it. Good game. So I have a feeling this line can be diffused by some accurate series of moves that shouldn't be lengthy for black. But I couldn't tell you what that is. You know, I was just playing this because of the similarity to the King's Indian line. Forgot the name of that line, by the way, but it's with the pawn on c4. Same setup for white. Black will have castled already, I suppose, in the King's Indian line or on the verge of castling. And then white plays bishop e2. I do feel, as played in this game, this was the key moment. Move nine. Probably one of two key moments uh, from this point forward. So knight g4. I think that that's the move. That's got to be the move here. I noticed too late, only after I had played g5, that that move was possible. And it works because bishop takes g4, bishop takes g4, queen takes g4, and then e takes d4, forking the two pieces on c3 and e3. So black will temporarily be down a minor piece, but they're going to regain that piece back because of the fork. A little hard to spot there, but I think both of us should have saw this. And then I think after knight h5, I take e5. I have a feeling white's better here, but if black had taken with the bishop... They would have far more play than the game. Bishop takes e5, bishop takes h5, g takes h5, queen takes h5. And just the mere fact that that bishop actually has a diagonal to operate with, there's not a black pawn sitting on e5, it's going to give black counter chances. Again, probably bad. I bet the computer's going to say like plus one and a half, plus two or something. But far more chances than what happened in the game where I feel like this is already pretty terrible for black. If they don't play f5, then... You know, I got this slow squeeze idea coming. Maybe black can try to quickly lash out on the queen side, but I think at this point, largely this is already game over. So, yeah, we'll take a look at the opening theory. If this interests you, maybe you can look into this line, but let's see how often it's played. 
Yeah, so we had the Pierce. D6 on move one. This seems like one of these openings, like the uh, Alakine's Defense, Scandinavian. It's kind of in that same bucket where you see the pros play it every once in a while, but it's clear they don't fully trust it at the top level. But for everyone watching, and myself included, this would be perfectly playable in almost every time format uh, against our opposition. We're not good enough to <laughs> you know, prove theoretically that such a move is is worse than like the Sicilian or E5. Like, yeah, maybe white can get an advantage a little more often, but nothing is decided yet. You'll have plenty, even if you were to adopt this and play this for the rest of your life against E4, you'd probably have decent results. Okay, so yeah, this is all standard stuff. G6, this is the traditional way to play the Pierce. You can also play E5, by the, by the way. I have a lot of videos from the black side where I've actually played this, offering to go into this queenless middle game, which I think is actually pretty interesting. Black gives up castling rights, but it's not simple for white. Okay, so let's see in this position where bishop e2 ranks. This is the master's database. It's been played 624 times. 37% wins for white, 33% for black. Not an impressively scoring line, I got to say, just based on eyeballing it here. Yeah, there's lots of moves that have been tried here. Again, f4. You can search my channel for Austrian attack if you want. I play that a lot. Knight f3, of course. This is the classical variation. Yeah, bishop e3 is a dangerous system. There's lots of lines with bishop e3 and queen d2, or um, also knight f3, and some combination of, of bishop e3 or bishop e2 later. Yeah, we won't go into the theory here. Also another idea, bishop g5. This one's kind of, kind of interesting. Black has to know their stuff here, because after bishop g7, if white plays the move e5, I believe it's pretty well known that black should not take on e5 because this leads to a nice simplified position for white, especially if black trades queens. Some of you may have wandered into this before, but a line like this, where white springs an attack on c7 really quickly, and I think here black is already in big trouble. Yeah, they're already clinging to life in this position due to the threats on e5 and c7. So. Bishop g5 is like yet another system white can try here. The burn variation, it's tricky. Black has to know um, move order-wise how to handle this, especially meeting this e5 move with knight fd7, I think is the best move. So, you know, the Pierce, it can be considered along the lines of a King's Indian defense. Black is actually adopting the same formation, just the only difference is white has the pawn on c2 instead of c4. Uh, so white's development's a little accelerated because they haven't played a pawn up to c4, but a lot of the structural similarities are going to be there because black has the same setup and they're looking to fianchetto the bishop. It does result in games where black doesn't get um, an attack against white's king on the king side as often as a king's Indian. And I think that's mostly due to this knight configuration and white's pieces just being in, in the game a little bit more. White spending less time trying to prop up their center or gain some massive grip on like the d5 or the c5 squares. But just know that there, there are similarities there. Yeah, so I played this bishop e2 line, and I, I guess I should show the king's Indian line that I was playing by analogy with. I can't even remember the name of this king's Indian line. Yeah, so it's here in this position. Um, this is like knight f3 is the, the classical variation. But you can play bishop e2, castles, and then knight f3 if you want, but you can also play this move bishop e3. This is along the lines of what I was doing. And again, looking in the master's database, which is a fantastic tool, highly recommend checking it out. You can see white scores pretty well here. And black is looking to strike back like e5, after which white closes the center. And knight a6, and then g4. So I'm, I'm kind of borrowing a page from this variation. White can try to advance over here. Uh, some very interesting games have been played in this line. Again, not something I played from the white side, but... I might be inspired to do so now based on this game in the Pierce that I just played. Okay, so bishop e2, black play bishop g7. Hard to argue with that. Looks pretty normal. Okay, and it looks like the, in the Masters database, they actually like to play h4 here right away. That's interesting because I, I do know, yeah, if black plays h5, you might claim that you can use the g5 square. Knight f3 or even knight h3. Also, bishop g5 played some. Interesting. 
Looks like white scores pretty heavily in this line. Might have to look into this more. The computer's not too impressed. But okay, so there is a branch there with h4. Knight f3 also played a fair amount here. Yeah, that would just transpose to one of the main lines. I don't think any particular uh, independent value there. I played bishop e3. We're still following 147 games at this point. Yeah, and now a6. That's dubious, apparently, according to the engine. c6 or castles is preferred. Let's see c6. What usually goes queen d2. Okay, so not g4. Not g4, huh? Or h4, for that matter. Not played too often. Some games. Hmm. What if black just castles? This is probably the most direct thing. Again, queen d2. Okay, so it seems like they like to play queen d2 a lot, maybe in the hopes of uh, bishop h6 or castling quickly. I would imagine with this setup, probably white's going to forego the g4 move, right? Because, you know, let's just say c6. Yeah, white plays h4 here. g4 wouldn't make as much sense now, right? Because black can take here. So the queen's no longer defending. Hmm. So it does look, just in my anecdotal experience here, just casually perusing the database, that in the Pierts, when white adopts this setup, they actually don't play g4 as often. Some games. But this queen d2 move is cropping up even more. Queen d2 with h4, h5, probably bishop h6, along the lines of a Yugoslav attack. It said g4 scores pretty well at this exact juncture. c5, counterattack. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, and c5 was also something that I probably should have mentioned in the game. Let's compare. So my opponent played a6. I went ahead and played a4. Could also think about one of these two moves. Even f4 playable. Huh. Shades of the Austrian attack. But I felt pretty good about a4. The computer's unimpressed, though, with both of our a-pawn moves. Okay, castles. g4. Hmm. And maybe c5 is the way to go here. That's the top move of the engine. It's been played once in the Masters database. We're only following four games now. Yeah, I don't think I considered this move in the game at this juncture. But again, similar to a King's Indian, this is a typical pawn strike against the center along with e5. And I think it works because of the pressure on the queen on d1. So let's say, um, let's say I take here. Oh, black's not even going to take back. Interesting. Because if you take back... Hmm, take here and we're on e7. And the engine doesn't think that black quite has compensation, although visually I would say black does have some compensation at least. Okay, it wants black to go queen a5. Yet another Peart's idea, threatening knight takes e4. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, once that two-move sequence is on board, c5, d takes c5, queen a5, it starts to click because those of you who play this opening for black will know that this is, this is an idea. But... Neither my opponent nor I put that together in the game. And it's already a pretty flexible, open-ended position. Okay, now, had Black played c5, I probably would have played g5 or d5, I'm going to guess. d5 almost looks like a, like a Benoni. e6, g5. Okay, this is a game. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure something along these lines is what I would probably end up on. Knight e8. Black looks pretty passive here with all these pieces on the back rank. H4. Okay, this would have been really interesting. At a glance, I would take white. But I do believe the engine that, that black has counterplay. So, okay, it is in favor of C5. But everything else at a very surface level evaluation here seems to be okay for white. So I'm mostly... It's so hard to parse through this, especially just in 15-20 uh, minute analysis or whatever. We're already in pretty open-ended territory here. I'm mostly just checking to see if my baseline assumptions about um, this G and H pawn attack were okay. And if I weren't, if I wasn't running into like fairly obvious tactical problems arising after a couple moves. So so far, so good, I would say. And what if black goes E5 right now? D takes and then G5. Wow. Yeah. The engine really does not like this option for black. Huh. Because even in the event of a queen trade, I have a pretty big development advantage. You know, this knight's hopping up here. That's trouble. Black can't defend the pawn. And if they push, 
Sayonara Rook on A8. Huh. So I'll keep that in mind. There could be a transformation where even if my kingside attack isn't the paramount plan, an opening of the center and a queen trade still might be bad for black because they're behind in development. So e5 is no good. Black played c6. I didn't really get this move, though. It seemed kind of slow. Again, black's not looking to play b5, I don't think, because there are pinning ideas here. Uh, if black's idea was d5, they could have tried that on the previous move. That would have been interesting, by the way. Probably would have played e5 and then figure out what to do from here. That, that looks like a completely legitimate option for me, by the way, too. D5. One game in the database from this position. Okay, so C6. I go ahead and play H4. Engine approved. And then this E5 move. Okay. And already that eval is ticking up there for white. The computer's suggesting queen A5 here, setting up knight takes E4 as a threat. I do like king F1 as a reply against that. Yeah, diffusing this. This looks tough for black. I think black's fumbled a little bit with the whole C6 thing. C6, A6, that combo here, probably not quite so appropriate in the face of this more aggressive push against their king. Yeah, I think at this point in the game already, it's hard for black on a practical level, even if the computer might be able to keep this together. Okay, so let's continue. E5. I played G5. The engine also believes this is strong. Taking and then g5, maybe by analogy with that other line we looked at a moment ago. Plus two and a half. Wow. Aggressive evaluation. This looks alpha zero though, like. Alpha zero like, doesn't it? Where I've staked out this territory, and in a lot of those like early alpha zero games, Leela, the AI inspired chess, um, it's not so much about trying to play for checkmate immediately with these pawns, it's the effect that they have later and the concessions that have to be made by the side facing the pawn storm that lead to some long-lasting effects even into the endgame. So, yeah, like knight fd7, queen d6, let's say, rook e8, h5. I'm just following the top moves of the engine here. I don't think I'm going to mate black in a position like this. In fact, it's just saying queen trade. But the space advantage here is already significant. There's pressure on this pawn. I can maybe go knight d2, knight c4, try to get into the b to the b6 square. This whole structure is unimpressive. Yeah, I, black has their back against the wall. They're cramped. And all the pawns that I pushed have not been punished in any way. So that, that's interesting that I can even swap queens here with equal material and still be substantially better. All right, so I did play g5 instead. The computer's reading a nice advantage for white, but let's check knight g4 because I thought this was the critical line. Didn't really think taking here was that big of a deal. Yeah, take with the bishop. Not take here probably, although I did mention that I have this. Computer doesn't like this, interestingly. I saved the piece, but apparently I'm all gummed up here. Black gets another pawn or something. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Coordination doesn't look great here. But okay, I have I have e takes d4, bishop takes d4. Pretty simple option there. So let's check knight g4. Best line against knight takes g4 is take, take, queen takes. Okay. Allowing this, I think I did mention this line. I'm trying to predict what the computer is going to say. Could it be taking d4 and then knight e2? Or the bishop to d2 move? I'm not sure. Wow, bishop takes d4. Yeah, so just give the dark square bishop and do this. Huh, it's a little hard to believe that this is plus two. What if black keeps the bishop? Keep rolling with h5. Wow, how could we expect anything else? <laughs> yeah, uh, the knight guards the knight on c3. My queen can scoot over to h4, and then I'm ready to unload and get at h7. Castling is easy. Pressure on d6, maybe further play down the h file. Okay, so th this is still good for white. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I would have found that sequence. Maybe I would have done something like this and tried to keep my dark square bishop, but that is significantly worse. Black's actually much better here, which I think stands to reason. So, would have been interesting had black played in h4. I would have liked to see if I could make that determination that 
Uh, parting with the dark square bishop is no problem, provided that I do so with tempo, and then I keep the pressure on with h5 pretty soon thereafter. And black could retreat 97, 98, but I don't think this, this is very appetizing. Yeah, again, takes. Black can't even take with a pawn here. Bishop takes, what, knight f3 or queen d2, I guess? f4, h5 on the way. A lot of pawn action. Still a little messy, but yeah. Okay, so knight h5. I took e5, and I really thought black had to play bishop takes e5 for better, for worse. You know, interestingly, this kind of looks like the other line, except I get to keep my dark square bishop on board, and black's king side is more compromised, right? Yeah, this does look pretty bad for black, but they're fighting. Engine's giving some line like this, discovery on the queen. Probably not enough, though. Yeah, so I think you got to take your, your chances with this, because the position in the game seemed pretty miserable. Again, if queen takes d1, I back the bishop up. Up a piece. So G takes H5, Queen takes H5. Black played F5 here. Other moves suggested B5, Queen A5. Yeah, B5. Probably that is a better move. What would I have done here? Maybe Knight E2. Maybe ignore it. I could also take though, because again, the A pawn's pinned. So I could do this and then. Try to claim that the d5 square is useful. Maybe rook d1, knight d5. Do I even bother taking here? Probably not. Seems like a distraction. But okay, f5, we take en passant. g6, also apparently pretty good, but I was pretty happy with en passant. <laughs> Computer wants a5, classic. <laughs> wants to take space on the other wing, too. All right, Castle's queen side is up there pretty, pretty high too. Yeah, I just thought let's delay the development of the knight. Bishop e6. This is already plus four territory. And knight h3, top move. Okay, I was debating between knight ge2 and knight h3, but as I got to thinking about it, I'm like, there's very little downside to, go, to going to h3. It just seems more likely this knight's going to be in the game soon. Yeah, I was looking at queen g6 in various situations. Yeah, something like this looks pretty natural. Pile up against the pawn. If king h7, there's knight g5 with a fork. Very tough for black to keep this together. Rook f6, ugly move. Probably just staving off defeat for a little while. So continuing forward here. a5 is pretty slow, but it's hard to suggest better moves here for black because yeah, I do think everything's losing. And there we go, rook d6. Nice move. Major tactical signal here. When the opponent's trying to rely on one piece as a defender, especially of a big tactic like a mate threat, that should be a signal that you might be able to remove that defender. All right? Look for a deflection. Lot, there's lots of removal of the, of the defender type tactics, often featuring a deflection. So, wasn't too difficult to put together that, you know, the queen is the one piece we'd like to get rid of here, and rook d6 is the most way, direct way to attack her without interfering with the g-file pressure. Like bishop g5 would attack the black queen, but it blocks the attack down the g-file. So I guess black should play something like bishop e6 instead. Yeah, bishop takes h3. Still super tough. <laughs> it looks like I can even play this move here with bishop e6 take. But... Even if I played queen takes h3, let's say black gets developed. Lots of heat coming in here. Rook d7. Pile up here. Maybe h5 on the way. Okay, a nice way to end the game. Just scooping up a piece. Not really much else to discuss here. I, I think I said if h5, I was just going to back the queen off. No, no rush to cash in with rook takes f6. We can just do this and all black's problems remain. All right, so uh, I think this this system was a success, my first outing in this. I definitely picked up some interesting ideas. Maybe white can do without the A4 option. I should probably look into some combo of queen D2 and H4 here, maybe omitting G4, although G4 also an interesting approach. 
as played in the game, a la that Kings and Ian line. Watch out for unexpected uh, tactical blows like Knight G4. I do think the game would have been completely different had Black played that move. The engine does indicate that white is better, but only with that specific sequence where we actually give up the dark square bishop and then play knight e2 and attack without the dark square bishop. That's very interesting to me. So yeah, when you when you take liberties on the flank flanks like that and you see Leela and you see top level GMs do it, just know that there's a lot of underlying calculation there and you have to be vigilant about ways your opponent can attack you elsewhere, especially in the center. So that's why I spent so much time like talking about the various ways black can break with a pawn in the middle. So, all right, interesting variation. Does this line have a name? I don't know. Someone, someone let me know in the comments if this bishop e2 line against the Pirates has a name. I'd be curious. So thanks again, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll see you again in a new video very soon. All right, later.